welcome to the Jogcast. Today we've been invited back to the Royal Society to learn about the most influential scientist in history and his famous publication. No other books have dramatically improved our understanding of the world. Sir Isaac Newton and his Principia changed the way that we looked at the universe forever. First published on the 5th of July 1687, Newton's masterpiece contains many groundbreaking discoveries. Within these 300 year old pages, you can find his famous laws of motion, his theories on gravity, as well as his work on the motion of the planets. Colin was fortunate enough to get the chance to speak with Professor Martin Rees, Astronomer Royal, who told him a bit more about Newton and his work. So was Newton the first person to actually come up with these ideas, these laws in the first place? Well, the ideas were in the air, but what was important about Newton was that he codified these mathematically and he showed us how you could calculate the orbits of planets and how the same laws that made the apple fall were those that held the planets and the moon in their orbits. And this was an important unification and gave us a picture of the so-called clockwork universe. And apart from being important in its own rights, uh, this was very important in the culture at the time as being the first real evidence that mathematical laws did govern the behaviour of the universe. So that was, that was the main stride that Newton made, that kind of universality. That's right, he showed that the same laws that we see on the Earth apply in the heavens as well, and he showed that you could make calculations and you could make predictions of uh, where the planets would be at a particular time and understand why they would be there. Of course, he was lucky, actually, because even though we now understand a good deal more about nature, there are many things we still can't predict. We can't <laughs> predict the weather, although we can predict the orbits of the planets. So he was lucky that he seized upon one of the phenomena of nature which we can both understand and predict. And he became an important uh, figure in the culture of his time. So how did he then go on? Um, tell us a bit more about how he uh, combined his theories of gravity with Kepler. It was already uh, known that the uh, planets moved in ellipses. It was known that they had slower orbits if they were further than the sun. And the one thing which uh, Newton showed was why they had elliptical orbits. And the one thing that held him up actually doing his uh, work was proving that uh, um, a spherical planet would exert the same gravitational force as if its mass was concentrated in a point at the centre. Right. And that allowed him to simplify the calculations and not worry too much about how big the planet was. Was that to do with the fact that gravity pulls the same it's kind of a radial force? Or? Well, it turns out to be true for the inverse square law, but not for other laws of force. And so what Newton did was he showed that the inverse square law of gravity applies everywhere. And, of course, this was uh, the standard picture and was only refined 200 years later by Einstein who gave us a deeper understanding into the nature of gravity and gave us laws which uh, applied when the gravity is stronger and when the speeds are higher than the region where Newton is a good approximation. But of course even now uh, Newton's laws are what are used by uh, those who program the orbits of spacecraft to the moon and planets. We've got in front of us here uh, Newton's manuscript for the Principia. It was, of course, uh, written in Latin, although an English version appeared uh, some decades later and became widely circulated. There was even a simple digest called Newtonianism for Ladies, which appeared <laughs> in the 18th century because uh, his work had a very wide impact. We've also got here um, a replica of Newton's telescope, which was a novel design for a reflector which uh, he pioneered and which of course is the basis for many much larger telescopes now. Many are said to be Newtonian telescopes and that just means they use the basic optics which Newton pioneered in this uh, little telescope here. Yes. Uh, here at the Royal Society we have lots of Newton memorabilia. We have his manuscripts, we have his telescope here, we have many portraits of him. And he was a rather vain man. He had about 50 portraits painted all together. But we also even have a lock of his hair. And uh, he had a death mask taken as well. So <laughs> he is very well uh, commemorated. There's lots of material about him. It's amazing that we've got so many artefacts left of, uh, sort of to have an insight in such a great man's life. That's right. We have to say, though, he was not a very pleasant man. Uh, <laughs> it's good to have these relics. But uh, uh, what we know about him suggests he was uh, rather solitary and difficult when young and rather vain and vindictive in his uh, old age. He lived into his 80s and was a fairly powerful and uh, famous figure, but he was not a pleasant man. 
unlike certain other scientists like Darwin, who we're celebrating next year, who is somebody you would, you would have enjoyed meeting. He's an agreeable man. It's, but to have um, such insights and to be such a pleasant man, I don't know whether that's <laughs> something that you can <laughs> necessarily balance together. Yes. Well, uh, Newton was asked how he had succeeded uh, so well in his work, and he said, by thinking on the problems continually. And what was remarkable from what we read about him was his immense powers of concentration uh, to actually think through a problem. And uh, although uh, his work appeared in this one big book, it was the fruit of literally decades of effort. So he had to kind of make himself a recluse, kind of, kind of shun what you would almost imagine to be quote-unquote normal life. He seemed to have done that through his most productive years. So the Principia came to be regarded as the rule book of the universe, providing us with rules that always seemed to be obeyed. Newton believed that we lived in a clockwork universe, with each tick as steady and reliable as the last. To him, the motions of the planets were just as predictable as a drop stone falling to the earth. For over 200 years, the theories contained in this amazing book reign relatively unchallenged as our best grasp with the intricacies of the world around us. Until a certain German-born Swiss patent clerk, Albert Einstein, revolutionised the world of physics. He would go on to shatter the clockwork universe forever. But that's another story. Well, that's all from the Dogcast here at the Royal Society. Thanks for listening. And listen, and listen to this. To this.